YouTube, it's your boy King Supreme. Back with another video, we got ESPN analyst gets destroyed for disrespecting Larry Bird. Not for new here. Welcome to the channel, homies. Just be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share if you're gonna see more bangers from me, boy. You feel me? Cause the grind never stops. But eh, today, so we got some more of that boy Larry Bird, bro. Very, very excited today, bro. Because we got some uh, interesting video today. We got a an ESPN, and this is recent type stuff, right? This is recent type stuff. We got an ESPN analyst disrespecting the, the, the one of the greatest one of the greatest players of all time. Who, who would do such a thing? First of all, was my first reaction on this. Um, but yeah, I saw this suggestion in the comments down below. And like I said, this happened very recently. I don't know how recently, but it happened fairly recently that this happened. So I'm very, very interested to see how this video is going to be. Thank y'all for the suggestion again. As y'all always, y'all have been very much just giving me and just blessing me with so much different cool reactions, and cool video ideas. I really much appreciate it, bro. All the videos I do, I get from y'all in the comment section. So I really appreciate it. Be sure to spam down below in the comment section. What videos I want to see next? More day bird videos, more basketball videos, anything. Spam it down below in the comments and I'll make sure I read all y'all comments because I do read all y'all comments. But yeah, I just, I just, there's just no way I just couldn't get to this video right here, bro. I, it, 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 who, would, who, would, who would do such a thing? Like, uh, but like, you know what I'm saying? You can have your own opinion, but, but disrespecting Larry Bird? For what? What did Larry Bird do? Larry Bird is so, you know what I'm saying? He talked his trash, but he is so humble with it. Bro, so it's like, how could you do such a thing? I, I just, why, like, how could you do such a thing? But, hey. That's beside the point. We're gonna see how this video is. Um, you know what I'm saying? It's the road to 50k, so you know the grind doesn't stop. Um, and make sure y'all turn on post on vacations because these videos will continuously be posted, bro. But and yeah, bro, we're gonna see this really, really this video right here, man. I don't know what to expect, bro, but hey, let, let's just see how it is, man. Let's just see how this video is gonna be. Um, be sure to let me know what else you guys are react to. ESPN analyst gets destroyed for disrespecting Larry Bird. Let's get it, y'all. Larry Bird is highly regarded as one of the 10 best players in NBA history. He was highly skilled, a great scorer, as well as a great passer. And when it came to his Celtics teams, he was highly valuable to their overall success. Now, with that being said, Larry Bird, like most older legends, is losing respect as time goes on. And when it comes to ESPN, I was absolutely floored to see a former NBA player Insulting Larry Bird Insulting? and saying point blank, he is not one of the greatest shooters in NBA history. And I think <laughs> blasphemy. But what did you do? Who said it? Who said it? Stephen A. said it. No way, Stephen A. said. Who? Not one of the best. <sighs> Hold on, let's let's just let's, let's, let's. NBA has gotten way past the bounds and watching guys up uh, give up dunks to shoot threes on fast breaks, that kind of thing. I think that has hurt the game a lot. Now that's me, I am old school, as we all know, JJ, perfect, but you know, Bird shot plenty of threes, and they had Parrish and McHale, Bird shot plenty of threes, the best, and Bird is one of the great shooters in the history of the sport, not even close. Bird, Bird shot threes, he never was a volume shooter. For no, I know that, but he was a great three-point shooter. He was not, not good, he was great. So, stopping that clip right there, Reddick, at the very end, had the facial expression of someone who was annoyed and disgusted yeah, you heard. by Larry Legend being called one of the best shooters of all time. And for someone like Reddick, it might be hard to understand that players in the past were also great players. Right, so J.J. Reddick, let's not get it twisted, J.J. Reddick was cold, was mad cold when he played, bro. He was one of the great, he, he, his three, crazy. I mean, I always used to play with him on 2K, bro, so I'm not going, I'm not, I'm not going to disrespect J.J. Reddick, as no one probably, uh, also probably would, because people know you know how good JJ Reddick is, but to know someone who paved the way for you to play in the game today, what is JJ Reddick even talking about? And I, I, I would not even JJ person JJ Reddick. I, I would not even expect him to say something like that. So it's like, make it make sense. Like, what are you even saying that for, bro? Hold on, now, man. Come on, man. But for him, he is so preoccupied with boosting up today's players, he downplays and disrespects past eras like Bird, Kuzi as well as Jerry West. Now, getting on to the actual argument, Larry Bird, in his era, there was a three-point line who was introduced his first year. Mm. But for middle school, high school, even college, he had no three-point line. That is some very important context a lot of fans either don't know or try to ignore. Yeah, imagine not having, and just having this, it's like, it's just a psychological thing, like you're so used to like, oh, I'll just take a, you know, I'll, I'll get these baskets wherever I want, but now it's like, now there's a three-point line, so I was like, oh, 
Like, you know what I'm saying? It's just a different person. That's that's totally right. That's a very good, a valid um, uh, thing as well he just said, bro. thing I do want to add, when Bird came into the NBA, he was actually a power forward who played primarily on the block. Mm. And despite that, in his first year in the NBA, he shot 40.6%. For behind the arc. That's a really good percentage. In terms of percentage, he ranked third in the NBA. He was fifth in total threes and sixth in threes attempted. As a rookie off the bat, Larry Bird was the best three point shooter in 1980. And what makes it even more impressive, out of the qualifiers for three point shooting, he was the only power forward to make the list, once again proving how much of a unicorn he really was. He's one of the top five three point shooters of all time. He, well, that's how good Bird is. Oh, yes, we're, we're not. We're, we're not. We're not. Three-point shooting contest, so he was phenomenal. Look at J.J. Reddick. Wait a minute. The disrespect. Bird is that one of the greatest shooters ever, but he's not one of the top five three-point shooters. Oh, yes, Three, whatever. Did you see the three-point shooting that he put on, those clinics that he put on at the All-Star game? Again, did you watch? Doggy, it's just math. It's it's attempts, it's mix, and it's percentage. And there's no way you could ever Look at the dude on right. He's like, what is this dude talking about? Look at the dude on right. He's like, this dude is tripping, bro. That's me, that's me. J.J. Reddick's face is kind of annoying me, bro, how much he's like. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why are you not giving Larry Bird his credit, bro? You know what I'm saying? He's not, and, and J.J. Reddick's not saying he's not great. He said, he's, like, he, he, he said just now, like, oh, he's great, but he's like, he's not, like, but he's like, he's downplaying how great he was in a sense, bro. You know what I'm saying? It's like, who would you put, who would you rank five then? What? Ray Allen? Curry? Bird? Um, who else would you say? But, like, who else could, is, in, is in your top five then, bro? Larry Bird is a top three three-point shooter of all time. You just you, you can't make that argument. You're, look, you're you basing it he's on, one of the, he's you're one of the basing it on math and a time of when he played. I'm basing it on just shooting. Now, looking at JJ in this clip, he once again provides no context, saying, quote, it's about makes, attempts, and percentage. Looking at the raw numbers with no context, no data, and no additional information. That argument right there, going on stats alone, is highly disingenuous. Mm -hmm. That's very true. Welcome unlimited for just twenty-five dollars a month. This is guaranteed. This for is three just years. only on Verizon. This is blasphemy, bro. Take a tour of a place from the comfort of your phone. This is just blasphemy, bro. It's nothing else. It's just blasphemy. For example, look at the mid and early two thousands. Back in that era, averaging thirty points was extremely difficult mm -hmm. for people like Kobe, Allen Iverson, Facts. and even T Mac. Being knowledgeable NBA fans, we know that era had a much slower pace, the paint was more crowded, and scoring was definitely more difficult. Mm -hmm. When looking at the raw stats with no context, players in today's league averaging 30 were more efficient compared to Kobe, as was Iverson. And like Reddick said, it's makes, attempts, and percentage. Someone like SGA off the pure raw stats was a better scorer than Pete Iverson. And someone like Tatum right. this is a was more impressive. This is a great argument, bro, on the opposing side. You know what I'm saying? And you're talking about someone, Bird, who literally the three-point line just got introduced, bro, to the game. So how are you going to try to compare him and hit? Like, look at that. You're, you're saying, Jay, okay, with, with J.J. Reddick's uh, argument, you're saying that Jason Tatum is better than uh, Kobe then. Is that what you're saying to me? Because what you're saying, then you're saying Jason Tatum is better than Kobe. Just say it then. Right? Obviously, that's not the case. So you can't make that argument, bro. Because, like I said, it's different errors, different paces of the game, different things introduced, way harder defense. Like, there's so many different elements. You can't just judge it off of that, that. In the early 2000s, Kobe. My overall point being, stats like usual require context. Facts. The same thing goes with Larry Bird and his shooting percentage. And speaking of that percentage, looking at Bird, after 1984, when he stopped playing with power forward, his overall shooting splits were highly impressive. Shooting 50% from the field, 39.8% and 90% from the line. During that time period, five different times, he shot above 40% from three, and his highest season was at 42.7%. Mm. And going year by year, in 85, he was fourth in three-point makes, 86, he was first, 87 also first, and 88, he was fourth. That's nice. For peak Larry Bird, from 85 to 88, he was first in threes made, first in threes attempted, and fourth in three-point percentage. For his overall era, in terms of volume and percentage, 
He was the step curry of the late 1980s. Type shit. Bird is a unbelievable... Again, we had this discussion the other day. We had this discussion the other day about James Naismith. James Naismith invented the game. You were rewarded for putting the ball in the basket. There's plenty of people that have shot more, made more, and guess what? Made more at a higher percentage than Larry Bird from three. I'm not saying Larry Bird is not one of the greatest shooters ever. He's not one of the greatest three-point shooters ever. Absolutely. You cannot make that argument. Yes, I'm is. sorry. Because the 80s are so much different. There's physicality, the right. way they people. There you I'm go. You, can Doug, we, can we get Doug, yeah, I've been trying to make a thing, point. Seriously, can I've been trying to make a point for you, Doug. So, once again, Reddick has zero Content. historical context. Yeah. And wants to make basketball black and white and about percentage and stats. Right. And looking at Larry Bird, like I said before, he was one of the pioneers for the high-volume three-point shooters from day one in the NBA. And for big men, he was especially unique in his time because most forwards didn't dare step out to shoot Right, because he's so and tall. Bird's he's like 6'10". Much like Steph Curry, he's like a big effect on the game. He's making threes like that. For guys like Dirk Nowitzki, Kevin big Durant, dude. and even Jason Tatum. Facts. And one thing I do want to nail home, in 1980, three-point shooting was a gimmick and a joke for most coaches. But for Larry Bird, in a five-year period, he legitimized it, True. upwards of 40%. Really True, not- because it just got introduced, so he's rising right, as a gimmick. He just got introduced, so how are you going to compare levels like that? There's no way you can't. Like, how are you going to say Larry Bird? Because he's the one that made it pop. Come on now. Come on now. What he was doing for his time. And like I said before, peak Larry Bird was an elite and all-time great three-point shooter. As from 85 to 88, he shot 41.4% from behind the arc, when the league average was 29.5%. Wow. Once again, showing Bird was light years ahead of the curve and is a unicorn first time period given his size, volume, as well as percentage. And one more thing I do want to reiterate is stats with zero context. As any average off the street can look at a box score, look at a percentage, and read it and tell if it's good or bad. But a real smart NBA fan, what they do, they look at the context, mm-hmm. the peak, mm-hmm. and the overall era. There you go. As looking at raw stats as a simpleton, someone like Kobe and his career stats aren't as impressive as Damian Lillard when it comes Facts. to scoring. As Dan compared to Kobe, Facts. average more points, Facts. a higher true shooting percentage, higher three percentage, and higher free throw percentage. It's true. What anyone in their right mind say Dan Lillard was a better overall scorer than Kobe. Because looking at the numbers, remember, makes, attempts, and percentage, Dane Lillard, in fact, was a better score. It's true, bruh. With that same argument that J.J. Redick is making, then, 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 like he said, Dane is on the same level as Kobe, which you obviously, not that Dane is not a great player, but you can't, like, when you look at it just that way, like this and that, then it's like you can't. That's not a really good good way to compare. That's like you know what I'm saying. Like I said, it's, it's a simple way. That's like a really simplistic way because it doesn't go deeper into the. You know what I'm saying? Like come on now. One in their right mind say Dame Lillard was a better overall scorer than Kobe, because looking at the numbers, remember makes, attempts, and percentage, Dame Lillard in fact was a better scorer. And once again, looking at Bird at his absolute peak in the playoffs, he was phenomenal. As an 86, he averaged 25.9 points, 9.3 boards, 8.2 assists, 92 point. 52, 41, and 93 split. 50, 40, 90. For NBA history, Larry Bird was the first player ever to have a high volume 50, 40, 90 postseason run. And since Bird, only Katie and Kawhi have joined him on that list. Let's say Steph Curry, for example. Right. When I watch Steph Curry, off the ball in a playoff game. Oh, he's great. Getting I know that. grabbed and held by Marcus Smart. They're attached to him at all times. Right. Then when I watch Larry Bird come off a pin down and no one's within five feet of him and they're shooting the gap. You're telling me one is more physical than the other? You're telling me that's more physical than, than Steph Curry being grabbed and held for 48 minutes? Now, stopping Reddick right there, when talking about any era of basketball, there are always good defensive teams and bad defensive teams. But for Reddick, when it comes to Bird's era, he only focuses in on the bad defense. Compared to Steph's era, where he totally ignores the bad defense and the awful teams like Houston, Charlotte, and San Antonio. 
And as a basketball fan on YouTube, it takes about five minutes to find Larry Bird playing against very physical defense who grabs him, holds him, double teams him, and does all types of things to limit his shot Look at that. Look at that. shooting space. And when speaking of the 80s, when it came to the Pistons, they had Dennis Rodman, Joe Dumars, the Lakers had Cooper and Worthy, Philadelphia had Bobby Jones and Caldwell Jones, Clearly Allen Robinson, Larry Nance, Sidney Moncrief, Buck Williams. We had great defenders on all time great. I mean, it was just a, it was just a tougher team. game back then. And just like Reddick, I could cherry pick bad plays here, bad plays there from any era. At the end of the day, it makes no sense doing that. You have to watch the film, understand the era, and provide context to what you're watching. Yes, back in the day, they played very close and compact to the basket. That's because back then, they didn't know the value of three-point shooting. Mm. But someone like Bird was a... Right, because obviously they would sag off because it's like the three was just introduced. So it's like most people were not taking that or most people were not even making that. So Bird was one of the only ones who was making it like that. So it's like obviously they're not they're going to be sagging off because it's not even really... It wasn't really like, regu like th that much regular at that point. Bruh, come on now. And you're an innovator of three-point shots for big men and just players in general. And one last thing I do want to throw in there, looking at Larry Bird, Mad Dog Russo brought up the NBA Finals. For Bird in the Finals, for his career, in five trips collectively, he shot 42.2% from behind the arc. Ooh, and when it came to clutch that's time play, in the final five minutes, shot a staggering 42.8%. If you look at three-point shooting for Larry Bird, at the biggest times when the stakes were highest, he elevated his game and arose to the occasion. And like Pat Riley said, Larry Legend is the guy you want taking the shot when the clock's winding down. So that right there is my last overall point. And when it comes to Bird, Very valid I personally Bird. think he's a top 10 shooter of all time. If you want to say top 5, I definitely wouldn't push back too heavily given his era and how good he was for his time period. And for Reddick, as you guys know, I am not a big fan of him or his takes regarding past legends. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Very, very valid points from my dog, uh, Uncut Hoopers. Be sure to subscribe to him. Very, very valid points, bro. Made, made so much sense in all these things. Much respect. Uh, but like I said, and we're not even being biased, bro. Like we're, we're, but it's like the hit points he was making does not, did not even make sense, bro. A lot of things did not even make sense, bro. But it's fine, bro. You feel me? Like, you know. But it's just like you gotta understand, you know, the, respect the greatness type. You know what I'm saying? And make some valid points while you're at it. If you're gonna, if you're gonna try to argue the latter. But that's the video. Hope you all enjoyed it. More videos dropping soon. Very, very interesting video. Um, and just really just to see, to really break it down, see what he was saying, and you know, you know, get my perspective on it. You know, he gave his perspective on it. Reddick, another guy. You know, I really, I really enjoy these type of videos, but it really gets you thinking, you know what I'm saying? So, but that's the video. Hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, more videos coming soon. Road to 50K, so you know the grind doesn't stop. So be sure to turn on those post notifications because these videos will continuously be um, posted. But much, much love to y'all. Please keep letting me know what suggestions y'all want me to get to next because I'm going to keep on getting to them for y'all. But yeah, that's the video. Like, comment, subscribe, share if you want to see more videos. Uh, it's your boy, King Supreme. Catch y'all next time, homies.